Okay, and welcome back to Fast Ship Performance then. My name is Tim Davies and I am back in my attack shack, then ready to drop some truth bombs on your personal battlefields, helping you to win the wars. You are fighting, there's a young guy written to me today and his issue, they always say, don't they, just a small email and then it's like an essay later. His issue is one I think applies to so many young people that I've decided to do a film about it. He's actually in my Patreon group, okay, he's a basic warrior. So we could do a one-to-one -one and we do a one-to-one, -one, but I thought I'd make a film about it as well. And obviously he's graciously said that I can, which is really cool. So uh, I can help out some young people. I'm gonna read his email out and then I'm going to answer it and we're gonna do it in less than about 10 minutes. So I don't want you guys wrapped up in an advice video for longer than 10 minutes. He says, um, hi Tim, I've sent you a message on Patreon, but I think this email is probably easier. I've been indulging in your free content on YouTube, Facebook and more for over a year now without much of a thank you. So joining Patreon is long overdue. I uh, hope all's going well with you and your family. By the way, if you wanna join Patreon guys, it's patreon.com, Tim Davies, just search for Tim Davies. Uh, I've got the, buy Tim a cup of tea, Legends, and they get a lot for that. I always bring them into webinars, I probably shouldn't. I've got the Basic Warrior and you've got the Advanced Warrior. And Basic Advanced Warrior get access to my new DCS Shadowlands server where I'm teaching flying training from what I learned in the past as a Royal Air Force flying instructor, but also what I'm learning or what I'm teaching or what I'm going to be teaching with Aerialists uh, in the future. So we had a stalling um, lecture last night where we went stalling on my DCS server, the Shadowlands server, but you won't find the DCS Shadowlands server, guys, because it is a private server, okay? So you will have to pay to get in there, but that's because I'm writing briefs for you and giving you real tangible material to use. Right, so he said, you know, thanks for that, Tim. No worries, that's okay, I really appreciate it. I am 20 years old, currently mid-application to the Royal Air Force and awaiting an OASC date sometime in the next financial year. I've been told about April earliest, Sad times I know, but I've instantly gone for the positive approach of filling up time with value, good word, to talk about in my interview and personal development for the other tasks I will face. Well, that's good. That's what I, that's what I preach, yeah. He says, I'm volunteering, teaching young people eight to 12 about coding over Zoom through my local library. That's brilliant. I took computer science at A-level. That's really cool. He started a PPL for some basic flight experience. Admittedly, I'm facing motion sickness, but hoping that will go away with airtime. Uh, so that I can say for sure that it is what I want to do for 12 years. Yes, absolutely. And the key here, guys, is um, to do that, basically. Uh, what I'm talking about here is the same as the air sickness. Well, air sickness does go away, uh, it does go away, but it only go away if you carry on flying. If you don't fly, it's not gonna go away. When you, if you fly sporadically, it's gonna be there. When I was teaching uh, attack weapons on fast jets at RF Valley on, where is it, this one here, I think. Oh, where's your hand, Davies? There. Oh no, it wasn't, it was this one. There we go, look, tail arts. This little chap down here. That's well, I taught them both, didn't I? But that, that was a T2 there. On the T2 here, I was flying part-time at the end, working in an office down in Bristol. And uh, I'd fly maybe once, twice every three months. And yeah, I'd feel nauseous for the first day of combat trip, most definitely. And the second trip will be fine. But never used to feel na nauseous when you do it all the time, of course. And that is important, because we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Right, so yes, you need to be able to get some flying experience in if you are applying to the Royal Air Force or the Royal Navy, because you have to be able to tell them that you're interested in aviation. And if they say, have you flown at all? And you say, no, they'll be like, go away, because you, how, you, how do I know you want to be a pilot? Right, also, so just do a couple of trips. Don't do a full PPL, it's really expensive. Do a couple of trips or go gliding or something. Right, so we also got a part-time sales role at John Lewis, which is really cool. And he says the application process had some similarities to the group work at the Officer Air Crew Selection Center. So that was a bonus. Any practice you can get like that is gold. Get practice. I'm doing the 10 peaks in one day challenge in the Lake District uh, in a week and off to Sweden in January on a snowmobile expedition. That's really cool. All of this is with the hope of strengthening my character and therefore application. Do everything you can to strengthen your character, okay, for this. Uh, he's, got a, he's at a good age, actually, 20. I get written to by people in, in their mid 20s saying, I'm gonna apply for the Air Force. And I'm like, you probably left it a bit too late to be fair especially with coronavirus knocking about. I know they've stored applications at the moment. I think the Royal Air Force has as well. I don't think the Royal Air Force, sorry, the Royal Navy. I don't think the Royal Navy has taken any applications for pilot for a while. Um, someone did write to me with that. Now you know everything about me, but not my childhood story. Right, here we go, guys. Let's get to it now, shall we? Come on, let's answer this. I'm struggling with one key point and I can't even put an exact word on it. I've always thought I lacked confidence as I could never do class presentations, approach people of importance, or even dreaded females for that matter in my younger years. Yeah, the dreaded females, they're all dreaded, aren't they? We always dread them. Uh, well, he approached me, I'm a person of importance. I'd, yeah, well, thanks, thanks, maybe I'm not a person of importance if he can approach me. But yeah, those dreaded females, we'll talk about that in a minute. Right, more recently I found it's not even that I don't think I can do what I set out to do, 
It's simply uncontrollable nerves which in turn make my performance worse by a long shot. Yeah, they will. That's what nerves do. But you, you're misunderstanding the role of nerves, by the way, in your nervous system. You don't understand this. I'll explain it to you in a minute. Any advice from yourself would be massively appreciated. I truly find value in a lot of your content talking about mental battles. I truly believe this, of all things, will be the biggest hurdle in my trip to OSC. Um, please use this uh, if you find value out of it. Yeah, I do find it valuable. That's why I'm using it. So thank you for that. And if you do write to me, guys, it's much easier for me to to reply to if I can put on a channel for everyone else to benefit from, right? You know, that's the whole point, isn't it? We're trying to help each other out, especially in these desperate times of corona. And as we've just entered the second lockdown in the UK with not really an end in sight because uh, Boris has kind of said it might be forever. I think it's some globalist plan, isn't it? To, to make us all into serfs or something. I haven't worked it out yet. There's a lot of conspiracy theories around, but let's talk about Jay's email, shall we? Jay, right. Yeah, you talk about dreaded females um, and you, you, the fact you find it difficult to do class presentations, approach people of importance, um, and you just find tasks really difficult. You've got un uncontrollable nerves. Now, when I left the military, I did a lot of speaking. I still do a lot of speaking, right? But I was a bit nervous as well, you know, walking out on a big stage full of people. It was like, yeah, yeah, I was nervous. And I learned to understand that that was necessary for me to feel that nerves. See, the thing about nerves, when you have nerves, people always think, oh, I'm really nervous and it's, it's really causing me problems. Nerves are there for a reason. You need to embrace nerves. If you're not feeling nervous before you do something of importance, it's not important. You shouldn't be there. You should just skip it, skip it, don't do it. Um, and so now I, I still feel some nerves when I go and do a big public speech, speech or something like that to a lot of people, I embrace it now. I, if I don't feel nerves, I'm like, come on Davies, get nervous, mate. People out here want something from you, come on. You need to be able to deliver this. Come on, nerves. And I'll start feeling apprehensive. And I'm like, yes, there it is. That is of value to me. I'm not going to go and speak to a bunch of people if I don't find value of it. When I speak, when did I last speak at an F1 team? Um, I went down there. Oh, yeah, they put the whole factory out in front of me. And I'm like, this is awesome. This, I like this. These guys, I like. They're, they're doing some good work here. They're professionals. I'm, I'm pumped to be here. And it makes your speech better, okay, by feeling a little bit of anxiety. Now, you can solve this pretty easily, and I don't want to run this video too long, so let's go for a three-minute advice session, shall we? So um, when the psychologists have people that have anxiety uh, disorders well, or, or problems with anxiety uh, over something, they, they find out what the anxiety is, and then they reintroduce the anxiety in very small amounts, increasing, which way are you looking? You're reading that way, aren't you? Yes. So increasing that uh, thing that makes you anxious over a period of weeks or months. They do that with spiders, for example. I'm really anxious about spiders, said someone. So that someone goes and sees a psychologist. Um, the psychologist says, what is it, spiders? Okay, I'll bring you in the spider next week. They bring in like a little money spider. It's a tiny mini spider. Do you want to hold the spider? I'm a bit nervous. Hold the spider. Right, so, oh, look, it's not bad, is it? Hold money spider. Ooh. And then they bring a little bigger spider, bigger, bigger, bigger spider. And then if the person freaks out, they just go back to the old spider again. And then they keep it going until eventually the, the guy's holding a spider and you're stroking a spider and it's called Jeff and they're, they're, they're going to go out to the pub, the imminent spider mate, and they're, they're the best of buddies and they're like, I'm having a laugh and talking about dreaded females, uh, whatever it might be they're talking about, all right? So that's what you can do then when you, when you have these issues. I think you have these issues because you're not doing these things enough. <sighs> when you're 20 years old, I get it, I get it. You've got to be laughed at. The only reason you're going to get over your anxiety is if you're able to be ridiculed by absolute strangers, all right? You don't know these people, you're never going to see them again. What pickup artists do, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how I know this, but I, I do know because I do speak to many people, um, they go out and just learn how to chat to women and they don't care about the women. I mean, they don't, they just go to a random town, bunch of three or four of them, they might wing for each other and they just go and talk to girls and they're really nervous initially, like hugely nervous, these, 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 these men or these boys, whatever. And they just go and practice and three guys will stand behind the one guy and the one guy will go up to a girl and say, hi there, um, I'm new in town, can you tell me where a bookshop is please? And the girl will either do one of three things, she'll tell them to go away, she'll say, well, I'll take you there, or she'll just give them a direction. Fine, what's wrong with that? And they will learn that, that it's all right to approach people like that. It, because people are more wrapped up in themselves anyway. I would suggest you do this. If you're nervous about presentations, you've got to go and do some presentations. And you're going to get laughed at. Get used to it. I get laughed at. Do you think I'm worried about that? No. Someone who said the other day, he goes, oh, you know, you're receding on top. I'm like, yeah, I am. I am. It must be something to do with wearing a flying helmet for the last 20 years or something. I don't know why, but I'm 46, whatever. You know, I don't mind that. Um, I don't mind, uh, you know, getting, getting laughed at for that. So I love being this age, 46. I think it's a great age to be. So 
you need to approach people of importance and find them and not be upset about doing that. And you're not going to get blown out, by the way, because people of importance aren't, aren't idiots. They're not, they're not dicks. They understand that, you know, you're trying to get on from the world. You're only 20 as well, by the way. If you're 24, 25, this, this will go away. It gets much better. Um, but you, people, people are anxious for their entire lives. So don't worry about that. Some people are huge anxious for their entire life because they've never done the work to sort their anxiety out. So when I do public speaking, when I first left the military, um, yeah, I was anxious, but the more I did it, it got better. And now I go and public speak and I don't, just like literally, you know, I, I like the people out there that I'm speaking to, else I wouldn't go there in the first place. Um, but I, I'm i not anxious like anything. I mean, it's, I, I see it as a great thing to do. I'm really kind of blessed that people ask me to come and speak to them about mental health in the workplace, whatever it might be. You know what I'm saying? Teamwork, all those kind of things. So I'm grateful for that. And so when I stand out in front of these people, I'm like, this is great. We're here together. It's like a family thing. So I'm not nervous like I used to be. Um, maybe small nerves, but I need them, as I said, okay? And you said, you're shaking your boots over the smallest of things, even if you've prepared and paired. I th you're over-preparing for a start. This is one of the reasons why you're nervous, because now you've got a lot to go wrong. If you didn't, one of the, sometimes the best talks I ever give or where I walk out on stage and I haven't prepared anything at all. If I've prepared something like a TED talk and I think, I think you know, I wake up in the night going, I'm gonna forget my lines. And then what do I do? You know what I mean? It's like, what's going on? I haven't done a TED talk by the way, but I'm saying if I script it like a TED talk, uh, I really worry that I am gonna actually kind of mess up one of my lines. So a lot of the time I say to the company, what do you want me to come and speak about? Okay, cool. I might do some background reading or something on that. I'll come up there. I may give myself like um, the opening, the middle and the end, just like, and I'll just say, this is what I'm going to talk about, guys. Um, uh, individualism, self-determination theory. And then we're going to wrap it up with uh, mental health in the workplace. I don't, I, whatever. So I, I've got three parts that I can, but no more than that. I'm not going to go into detail about it. I'm not going to script it. I'm not going to have a PowerPoint presentation where I've got to read stuff off. Because you've got more to go wrong, haven't you? If you over-prepare, you've got more that can go wrong. I'm not, I always do advocate preparing, by the way, but not in the way that's going to make you hugely nervous and anxious and everything like that if that's the case you need to go and fail fail more I t all i talk about is failure and i think sometimes people miss what i mean by this failure is, is a good thing it's first attempt in learning we know this f-a-i-l first attempt in learning i never met a pilot on the front line that hadn't failed a trip oh is that true maybe there's odd harrier pilot <laughs> and i say harrier pilot because then when they do fail it's a real big issue they might fail on a, on a tanking sortie or something. And then if they've never failed before, it's hard. It really is hard. You've got to fail. So when we had guys in flying training or girls in flying training that were coming through without failing before, they start stumbling. We knew that if they did fail, it was going to be terminal. So what we would try and do is make the sortie a little bit more difficult, just a bit more challenging, fail them early, and then we can rebuild them. Okay. Just make it, just push them a little bit. Oh, good. Now they fail something. Yeah, now they're going to be in bits. But you know what? They're going to be in bits with 35 instructors around them who have also failed a lot in their lives. And we understand it and we can help you out. It makes a much better pilot. So I advocate failure. Go and join Toastmasters. Learn to do public speaking in front of people. Embarrass yourself. Stumble over your words. Get things wrong. Get laughed at. All right? It's just one life. I know you're only 20, mate. Don't worry about it. It's cool. This is why I'm giving you advice. But I would put, I would challenge yourself. The things you're doing are challenging for you. Um, snowmobile thing, everything like that. Maybe give a presentation on your snowmobile expedition when you get back to maybe John Lewis. Maybe there's a presentation club at John Lewis. Take some pictures. Guys, I went on a snowmobile expedition. I want to give you a 20-minute presentation on it. And actually, really weird, because uh, I've actually got this big issue with nerves I want to overcome, which is why I'm standing in front of you now to try and overcome that. I mean, you will get clapped. You will like, mate, oh, mate, you know, seals, arf, arf, arf. People will go, that is, that is brilliant. You never see it, do you? You never see people going, look, I've got a problem and I'm trying to do something about it. You never, because everyone's like hiding away, right? Hiding away their problems. Like everything's fine because everyone's, you know, everything's fine. Of course it's not fine. That's what I'd say to you, all right? Go out there, challenge yourself and fail. If you've got problems with females, walk up to females and talk to them. They're not going to bite, not most of them anyway. Um, some do, of course, you know, crikey. But um, most females don't bite. So go and chat to females however you can. Um, go and chat to people you don't know. All right, just ask them really loose questions. Like, I'm new to town. Can you tell me um, where I can, where's the train station or something? You make something up, okay? Something easy. It's just, and then thank them. Thank you very much. Get used to that backwards and forwards. You're going to sound nervous and they're going to see you as nervous and they're going to probably laugh at you a little bit, maybe, or they probably won't because they, they'll probably sympathize because that's just how it is. What's it matter if they do laugh at you? Right, look, when people see a 15 minute video, they don't click on it, all right? And I want you to click on it because I want you to get the advice. So that's all I'm saying is challenge yourself. 
get, get out of your comfort zone, uh, embrace the fact that nerves are there, everyone's nervous, and you haven't got much experience of life right now, so that's cool. But you know what? The more work you do, the easier it's going to be become. The easier it's going to become. And actually, you're doing exactly the right things for an application to become an officer in a major's Royal Air Force. I wish you the best of luck, all right? Tim Davies, Fast Performance.